I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. Yeah. Cause all my life you have been faithful. Oh, yes, you have. And all my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am made.
When trouble comes And my heart burden me Yet I'm still Waiting in the silence Until you come And stay a while with me You raise me up So I can stand on mountain You raise me up To walk on stormy seas I am strong When I am on your shoulder You raise me up more than I can be There's no life No life without a strong one Each restless heart Beats imperfectly But when you come And fill my life with wonder Sometimes it seems I glimpse eternity. You raise me up so I can stand on mountain. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your. Oh
this time, with the heaven, freedom in my little postulate, amen. All the visitors, just about everyone, and I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Tribute from the youth department to our dear pastor, Pastor Joshua Cummings. Life has a way of making us become comfortable in thinking that someone will always be there, in allowing us to shun the thought that says in the midst of life there can be death. Pastor, oftentimes we took you for granted. Our human nature led us to sometimes overlook the things you did and the best parts to you. One thing that was without question was Pastor's passion and love for God and for us young people. Our most memorable moments with Pastor was when we would go out on church trips. We would go many places, Trelawney, Kingston, Mandeville, St. Anne, among others, some near and some far. One thing we would always look forward to going home from these church trips was the fact that Pastor would always buy us something nice to eat afterwards. Oftentimes it would be something that was at the whole church, mostly chicken and soup. However, if that wasn't available, we know that the next best option was KFC. As young people, you can just imagine which option we enjoy the most. Yeah. Even if you don't have a fear, he would say, that's all right, man. Come see him with. Mo will take care of that part. He was that type of person and the passion and zeal he had for God rubbed off on many of us. Sorry. The journey as well to these churches was not without fun and joke. Because even though he was a pastor, we can definitely say that he was a humorous one. Pastor would always run a little joke or two, and at the end, he would probably say something like, not sure Sister Chevelle, or not sure Brother Ronaldo, even if he was the only person laughing, he would laugh. I remember vividly one night, we were going out on a church trip to a church in Warsaw, and Sister Shannon was sharing a story about a man and something that happened to his shoes at church. Funny enough, Pastor combined that into a message that he preached the same night at the church. When we went back to the car, Pastor commented by saying, Sister Shanil, you give me the message tonight, man. We all had a laugh about it, knowing that something so simple could be used as an encouragement in the form of a message. <laughs> man for God, and oftentimes he would talk to us young people almost like a father. He mentioned his men method and style of leadership was not always favorable, but he always sought to give the young people a chance. When it was the season for youth week, oftentimes he gave Brother Ronaldo and myself the chance to choose the speakers on the road that he believed in us to step up the place and allow God to lead us in the right decision. He mostly supervised what was done and introduced the guest speakers. His love for the youth was shown in his desire to teach in the children's Sunday school, even though he was the adult Sunday school teacher. Sister Shamara Valentine recalled him as being a pastor who had a good heart trying to always compliment you if you had on a different outfit or shoe.
something of that sort and an individual to notice the little things, giving you praise when you deserve. Above all, despite his faults as a human being, Pastor Collins was a kind man who just aspired the best for the youth and for us to reach our truest potential. God bless you. Amen. That is the perfect. Amen. Amen. Sister Shiva, we know that it is the fact that the young people come first. Amen. Coming to us at this time, hello, Sidney Collins, presenting the men's department in the name of the Lord. Can I give him a hand of applause? Let's praise the Lord, everybody. Let's praise the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. I'm glad tonight to be here. It's not because I'm good. Because of his goodness towards me. And I thank you for that. I praise him tonight because he's God. And there is no God like unto him. There is no other God but him. I was asked to say something on behalf of the brother with the party. Praise God. I would say tonight that I don't even know how to stop. But within my heart, you can imagine my cousin has just gone and but death other times to steal us away. Steal us and carry us away. Whether the pastor or the elder, the missionary or the evangelist, the sister or the brother, death of a time to steal each and every one away. No matter if it's a bishop, no matter what third human you eat or what place you hold, what possession you have in the church or in the world, in life, death of a time to steal each and every one away. I can remember because a couple weeks ago I was home. I have a little problem, my wife was sick. And when I looked around, I did not see anyone else to call at the time of Pastor Collins. I kept up my phone in my hand and I called. I did not get any answer. I put a text on the phone and leave it. And Saturday morning, I got a call from Pastor Collins. He told me that he was also sick. And he was like he was suffering. I didn't take it so serious. Because I said, oh, Pastor could just sick and suffering so quick. So anyhow, that was what he said to me. So I give him goodbye and say, well, I have to go with my wife to the doctor. Saturday evening, I didn't be able to call him. Sunday when I called, I did not get any reply. So I'm saying, I said to myself, maybe Pastor is resting. So I called him again. I never able to call Sunday evening. And Monday, the message was, Pastor Colin is dead. Oh my God, when I heard the message, when I heard get the message, I feel like myself, I was going to die. I just run inside and said to my wife, Pastor Colin is dead. You know, it's not a cast so where we don't know that we have to die. Yeah. But sometimes when it comes, who was really looking for it that way. The young, strong, going pastor, my family is my cousin. Praise be to God. The last time he came to my house, we talked. And the thing that he did for us was so good. He prayed for both of us, Mr. Cousins and myself. And the prayer he prayed, it was like God sent him to pray for us. Oh, yes. It was so inspiring. It was so touching. We could feel the prayer of us at Hallelujah. And he did us goodbye. 
when you step out of the house and he said to me, this must be a sender of prayer. I turned around and I said, no, we're not ready to go yet. I don't think I'm going to cross like me a sender of prayer. But really and truly, it wasn't for us, but it was for him. I said he prayed, and when I said he prayed, I mean that he prayed. Yes. He prayed, and you could see his prayer going to heaven and coming. Yes. Thank God tonight. Yes. He's gone. Yes. But I have a hope yes. that he's going to rest yes. in peace. And tonight, uh, this evening, I'm saying to each and every one, let us work the work of righteousness, because we know that when the time will come, when we too, you have to go back to you in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord, Dr. Ellison, the colleagues. Region 1 is coming on very nicely. Sister Garcia, on behalf of the missions, huh? I was in the kitchen and my voice. <laughs> Shall we bless the Lord? Shall we bless the Lord? Shall we shout hallelujah? Glory to God. Happy and I to be in the house of the Lord one more time to give a tribute on behalf of Pastor Joshua Collins. Knowing that he was a stallion in the gospel of God, he is a veteran. He is someone that we can call on and someone that we can depend on. I am standing here this afternoon with a heavy heart. And it also filled with joy, love, and peace. Knowing that he was a person that very joyful and cheery. And as I quote this little terms, as I see you standing there behind the pulpit, reading from the God words, and I think back unto all those wonderful blessing and ceremony from you I have heard. On behalf of the mission department, Pastor Collins was a person that always supported. He would always be there whenever a function is going on. Wherever we must go and to visit a church, he always presents himself there with us. Even when I was the mission president for 2018, and it was a task for me because I had never been a leader in a position before. And he has carried me through that moment that I have said to him many times that I want to give up and I can't manage. And he says, the guys are on. Tell how many people don't easy to give up. You need to fight, you need to stand tall because this is the work of God. And I'm here today because he has moved me and motivated me to be the person that I am today. And the mission department, he always supports you. Whatever you put to the table, he always here to support you and to do whatever you are doing for the Lord. As long as he's there to build the kingdom of God, he always there to hold your hand and to lead them through it and to make sure that everything's done in order and in decency. So today, I am not weeping on behalf of some that don't have hope. I'm weeping because I've known that I was the one that dared to hear his last words, to hear everything that he said, and he had asked me and given me a task. He had given me a job to do. And it is hard to know that someone that you get used to, people may look at it in a different angle, a different way. But to know the person that you know him, some part that they know him, but I don't think they know him, but he's a good person. A person that really love God, love his work, love his love what he do for the Lord. He when it comes to the work of God, he doesn't joke. He doesn't play that way when it comes to the work of God. And today I'm standing here to know that even when he was passing, he said to me, he called the sister G behind the sea. Because some people said I must not use the word sister G. But I will be denying myself. And he said that, Sister G, when I went to the hospital in the morning, when he called me and said that he needed a cup of tea, ginger, garlic, turmeric, and so forth. And I bring it to him at the hospital. And he said to me, Sister G, 
Intel, you are Intel, you are Intel into the test. I said yes. He said, what was the result? I said to him that man is past negative. And he said, what is the Intel? I said, I'm not sure. He said that I was lying. And I said to him, for your room, am I able to tell any lie? He said, no, but this one is here telling me a lie. But anyway, he was there, and I said to him, hold on and fight, because I know that I have that determination. And he said to me that, if it is God's will, let it be done, because I fight and I've kept the seed, and I do what the Lord has called me to do. And I said to him, but don't talk like you're going to pass off, no. And he said, Sister Jimmy said, if it's God's will, let it be done. And he asked me to take care of his mom. And there is his mom. And I'm there with them throughout this time. And I'm ensuring that she's okay. People will talk and people will say, but I'm doing what he has asked me to do. He gave me a task, he gave me a job, and I'm going to do it because he asked me to. Because I know that if I were in his position and I asked him, he would have done it. Because he has been there for me so many times. When my son was sick and I did not know what's wrong with him, and they attended that to, to bring him go to all places. And he said to me, Sister Jesus, can we go anyway? Because nothing not wrong with the people. And I took him to Spanish town in St. Catherine. And when we went there, and he, he always have a backup alibi. He never leaves his alibi. And he prayed and he had mountain. And he prayed. And he said, Sister G, the last time I was telling you, we can't have your son now. Can you come up here? You know, I'm going to make a sense. And I took his advice and I bring my son home. And my son is home with me now. That is from when he was nine years old. He had seizure. And I've been up and down and he's always there. My mom started to sick and he's there with me also. With my mom. I have been through many and he's always there to encourage me. Even when I feel like the give up and I said, Pastor, I can't manage. The church and the whole entire family and everybody calling and depending on them. He said, Sister, you can't please. He said, with, with Christ, I can do all things. So he said, come on, man. Shake off that and stand up, man, as I can please. And, he, and I said, okay, then. I will, because if you believe in me, then I need to believe in myself that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And as I hear and I call, God look around his garden and found an empty place. He then looked down upon the hurt and saw your tired face. He put his arms around you and lift you up to rest. With the help of his angels, they flew you to your heavenly place. Thank you, 
Father asked me to do this song and I want to do it for him. Hallelujah. Why?
Good evening. God is good. All the time. All the time. So today is a is a bit of sweet day for most of us. This gentleman here, I would have met him close to about 20 years now. I met him when we were both employed in the same company. We used to work with the Bauxite Company and uh, Sir Collins was a maintenance operator and so from time to time we would meet up with each other and also he moved to, to Black Ring where also now I reside in Black Ring and therefore we became closer friends to the point where sometimes we used to do what you call pool, pool driving where maybe for this week I would drive and if, uh, if everything was okay with Sir Collins sometimes I would park my vehicle because you know when you want to save on petrol sometimes you, you know and because he was such a nice and humble and decent fellow we would do that but during movements with Brother Collins, the relationship that we shared was one that we could open the speak to each other. But when Brother Collins told me that he was a Christian, at first, because he was so so much of a jovial fellow. And I will say that he was one to allow the females to be comfortable. He was one that would compliment a lady. And you know, very often you have persons who would treat women less than they are to be treated. He was one who was always complimenting and encouraging the females. But when it came after about three years or so with Sir Collins, traversing back and forth at work, he was doing, he started a business and the business started to grow. He was making windows. And one day he said to me that the business was doing so well that he was considering to, to follow through and leave the job and concentrate on the passion of doing that business. But I said to myself after he told me that because he was making pretty good money and the job was a permanent job. So I said, why look at Brother Collins brain a leak? Because you know you can have something so good and so steady and walk away from it, right? But he followed his passion and his love and he left to pursue that career. The funny thing about it is that shortly after the plan closed, so it would appear as if he was preparing himself and the father had pushed him in that direction and you know he was doing pretty well but what I admire about Sir Collins was the passion and the love that he had for people yes. this morning when I told my mother that they were having a service for him and she said the first thing she said to me said why she said what a man because even if Sir Collins was going in the opposite direction and she maybe would be Christian at all and when Sir Collins looked and saw her 
He would say, Miss Miller, what are you doing? And he said, I'm going down. And he just turned right back and jumped her down. He was that type of person. You understand? Those type of person, you don't find them so easy. And no charge. He just, he just did, did the love of doing good. And about a month before his passing, my mom called Sir Collins because he was the one that installed the windows in the house. And one of them was giving some profit. And um, she called him and she said, Miss, Miss, Miss Miller, I'm going to come down here Tuesday. And then Tuesday came and he didn't come and he didn't come and my mom called him. He said, boy, the work is on me, but I'm going to find some time, right, and come. And he came and he sorted it out. But I will say this to you. When I recognized and appreciated Mr. Collins, and the transformation went from Mr. Collins to Pastor Collins, was I was invited some time ago at a function here. And when I came, and when I heard Pastor Collins preach, I was electrified. And I said to myself, what a calling. This man have a gift. Yes. He had a gift. And he was not one of those pastors who, you know, when they're preaching, they're trying to figure out what is happening. Yes. He was feeling it. And he was ensuring that you understand that there is a love, there is a there is, a, there is a feeling when you come in contact with Jesus Christ. And he was welcoming you to come to Jesus Christ to read some of what he was feeling inside. And when I left that function and I was driving in my vehicle, I said to myself, wow, this man was a special breed of man. Special breed. Because you don't find this type of person like you. It's a special, rare. Yes. And I will say to you that this community is not the only community that will feel that void for Brother Collins. Because his wings spread far and wide across the parish or across the country. By everywhere he went, and the person that he came in contact with, and the churches that he would have visited, he was one of those persons that was not afraid to, to go to any church. He was that type of person. But in the midst of life, there is death. And tomorrow is promised to no man. And sometimes the Father takes the best of us. Because we are here thinking that we are special. The politicians, the money man, the pastors, we are not special. All of us have a human, our human being, and we have a day when the father decides that, okay, come. He does not do cherry picking, he's not partial. But I will say before I take my seat to many of us inside here, sometimes we come to church. And we sing and shout. But we still don't talk to our neighbor. We still have that, 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 that negative and that bad feeling inside of us. And since we come inside the church, somebody got the wife on the door. Yes. So that means they're inside the church, but they're still not appreciating the fact that they are in the power of the Lord. And just as long they can cut their eye at me, the same way you should walk through the door. And the father said, come now, you are lost. So I will say this to you. Make your calling an election tour. I'm not speaking about the general election or the parish council. I'm speaking about the election in Jesus Christ. I am the chairman of a hospital. I am on the regional board of directors in the Ministry of Health. And I am also a politician. Yes, sir. 
As we speak now, I'm coming from two great again. Right? And I bypass about two other areas. 37 persons has made transition from this earth in the past two weeks in my division alone. And I would not dare to tell you from the hospital or the region the amount of persons who have died. Some of them COVID, some of them not COVID. But what is sure is that death is sure. So I'm making appeal to all of us inside of here. Evaluate your life. Look around and make a choice that when the time shall come, we cannot wonder. We can sing and shout and praise the Lord over your body and know that you would have made a good decision when you are living here on earth. May God keep and bless all of you inside here. And I wish and hope that during this time of the pandemic, we try and be as safe as possible. The devil is a liar and he is right here. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Let's praise the name of the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the name of the Lord, everybody. Glory to God. Glory to God. I have a few tributes here. Just going to do it at this time in Jesus' name. Emmanuel Apostolic Church, Lancaster. It is with heartfelt condolences to our dearly beloved Pastor Joshua Collins, family, church family, and friends. Pastor Collins was a dedicated, loving, and kind person who was always willing to assist in whatever way possible. I can remember clearly that he has never visited us in Lancaster empty-handed. He is always bringing gifts with him. Whenever he expounds the word of God, it leaves comfort, reassurance, and fills the empty souls. Today we may question God, but let's remember that we all have an appointment with death. And we know that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. And so it pleases him to call him to come up to higher service. Therefore, I encourage his family, church family, and friends to weep, but not as those without hope, because Pastor Collins is gone home to be with his God. And I know that his labor is not in vain. God bless you as we pray your strength. And this is from Pastor Thompson and the Saints in Lancaster, Emmanuel Apostolic Church. Amen. Greetings to my father's children, to the bishop and pastors and everyone their respective office. Greetings. I want to give special greetings to the Berry family and also the Freedom family in this season of great loss. Which we all know this season well. It's okay to cry, as Jesus did at the tomb of Lazarus even though he knew that after death there would be a resurrection. So at this moment is intoxicated with grief and pain. Let us not dwell too long in this place of sorrow, because unlike others, we do not mourn as them which have no hope. As our friend and brother is now waiting to hear that voice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ saying, Pastor Joshua Collins, come forth. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16 which declares For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with that, with that voice of the archangel and with a trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. With this in mind let us also be at the place of preparation as we know now when we too might be taken away from the hands of death. So let us live in the mindset of the apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. It might be our loss in this season, but for sure it's heaven gain. Which if we live right, heaven again is our portion. And this is from Bishop Chambers and the saints from Bible Way Apostolic Church. Also there's also two more. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. All right, I'll get back to this one. 
in Jesus' name. Okay, at this time we're going to be moving on with the program. At this time we're going to be calling Region 5 to come at this time, which would be Zion Gate, White Sand, Free down here, but we already got ready. Praise God in Jesus' name. And the White Sand. Come on, put your hands together. Now we're going to find the Lord, everybody. Shout the word to the Lord, everybody. Yeah. Hallelujah. First thing was to the rest of associates, Breeze family, choir, one of those saints in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing a song for my truth. I love you, Lord.
Yeah. And that's all the school tells us that let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Truly, today is an, a sad occasion as this that we are here gathered in celebrating the life of our good friend, Pastor Joshua Collins. Before I say my bit on protocols observed, let me be the pectoral ministry that is gathered here today. What can I say about Pastor Joshua Collins? I have known Pastor Collins for all my life. I've known Pastor Collins all my life. And when I got the news in Boston that Pastor Collins passed away, it was so shocking that the only thing I could have done was run to Daddy and say, Daddy, you got any news? Daddy said, No, what are you talking about? I said, Did you hear that Pastor Collins passed? He said, No, sir, no, 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 no. And of course, after that, I spoke to Renato, and then I spoke with Felicia. When I spoke with Felicia, that was when it felt so surreal, like, no, this could not be happening, but it was. And even coming here, in my mind, Pastor Collins was not dead until I saw him laying in the bed. Pastor Collins wasn't just a pastor under the leadership of my father who oversees this region of churches, but he was a friend. A friend so much that long before I started driving every single church trip, Pastor Collins would not leave my twin sister and I, and of course, Angel and Joshua. And just as how Sister Shevel said he'd be running his jokes, yes he would. And of course, he's engaging you. Not your Sister Tanya, not your Sister Tanika, yes. And to say he would have charged us for those trips, never. But one thing was for sure, your KFC was there. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Whether or not it was regional fasting, he knows that we are lovers of bun and cheese. And trust me, bun and cheese would be on the house. There were many times when Pastor Collins would come by our house to either speak with my mom or my dad. And if we're making breakfast, nobody thinks that Pastor Collins are afraid to eat him. I would say, Where are you, Give me four of the pin. And he's eating and he's just enjoying the fellowship and that was just the virtue of a man that he was. He wasn't a pastor that judged you based on how you looked or how you... Can I find the right words just to say like Pastor Collins was just not that man. And to say I have lost a friend, I have lost friend in Joshua Collins. I tried to pen a few words to say and I looked on the program and I said, what is the meaning of life? What is the meaning of life? Is it death? If death is what brings life, what gives life to, then what is the meaning of death? Is it sadness or a cold, hard body? Or is it just an illusion of life itself? Life is an open book full of blank pages. It's a notebook. Two pages are already written by God. And of course we know one is our birth and one is the day we die. And if we were to just suppose Colin's life today he would have been blessed with 55 beautiful pages worth reading. The measure of this man, his greatness wasn't in the number of the servants that he had, but in the number of the people that he served here at Freedom 
in my own apostolic church. Pastor Collins was a stalwart of a man. And before I put this microphone down, I am going to be singing the words of this song because we're living in a time when this pandemic allows no one to visit, no one in the hospital. But Pastor Collins was blessed with the presence of Sister Garcia in a time when he needed her the most. And it was such a blessing that he could have called on her at such a time to render support because it's a cold, dark period that we're living in. When you're weary, 
Lord, everybody. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. Glory be to God. You know, as we're here to celebrate the life of Pastor Joshua Collins, but with the interest of time, just gonna ask you just to take two minutes. Is that an amen in the house? Is that an amen in the house? Pastor Collins was a good man. He's up and about. Praise God. We just want to give persons the opportunity. Praise God to say something before the time gets dark. We praise the name of the Lord, everybody. Out here is what a wonderful feeling. Stand, everybody. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Hallelujah. Is the God good? Yes. He has given us so many blessings. Undeserving. Yes. That's what we are. Yes. Greetings to the whole stock of Israel. Yes. In the mighty power pack name of Jesus. Yes. Accept greetings from Wilson's Road and Warsaw in the name of Jesus. Yes. Pastor Collins was a good friend to us, was a brother. Praise God. We never asked Pastor Collins to preach in Wilson's Run or Warsaw and he turned us down. You know? oh, yes. Never. When I said never, he was a good soldier. Praise God. Even if you call him Monday and say, sir, you preach up, put me out. You can't come tomorrow. Pastor Collins said, okay, sis. He was that type of person. I don't know when people that some we say good and some we say bad. But I'm not here to talk about I don't know. I'm talking what I know about Pastor Collins. He was a good soldier. And when he preached, he preached under the anointing. And when he feel the anointing, you hear when he said, Woo! I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Pastor Collins, he was a radical man for the gospel. And I'm telling you, when he preached on worship, I could remember the last message he preached was youth week. And he said, you live in a warm big house, so what bedroom you can't sleep in? One no more. One no more. And I'm telling you, he would have given you the word. And I know Pastor Kelly from a way back. First time we used to see Pastor Kelly with my brother Patrick. Ah, the white first time. And then going on, I get to know freedom people. And I'm telling you, I never met Pastor Kelly in Christiana. And we don't talk about church. He always say, oh church, oh pastor, yes. go on, go on. And we say, sir, sir, Mr. Guan, church still a Guan. We always talk about church. I don't know about you, but I miss him. Yes. I cannot talk for you. I'm talking for myself. I really miss Pastor Collins. I don't know when I really realize Pastor Collins that I would reach us. So we say, yes, 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 you. yes man. But yes. I know we don't have to God, God. Because we have a lively hope yes. that we cherish not in vain. And freedom, we are going to help hold up your hand because the church must go on. Because the devil wants to see God on. But you know, you know, the church must go on. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus, God to prepare a mansion for me. Can we just worship the Lord while we sing the song of Zion? Hallelujah. Jesus, going to prepare a
to the God thanks for this evening. I want to extend condolence to the family of Pastor Collins on behalf of my pastor, Pastor Mary Freckleton. Praise the name of Jesus and to the church family as well. Praise God. You know, I was sitting there and I was saying it was just like a few days ago. Praise God. I was here at Mother Baker's funeral. Praise God. And looking at Pastor Collins walking in. Bless the name of Jesus. And when he came to the podium to introduce the speaker, and he said that he wasn't feeling well, he went to the doctor, praise God, and he left, praise God, because he wanted to come to the funeral. Praise the name of Jesus. It was just like yesterday. Praise God. Hallelujah. I was looking back, praise God. It, it was just like yesterday I was at his installation service here. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. It was just like yesterday. And today I am at his funeral. Praise the name of Jesus. I look at Bishop Williams. Praise the name of Jesus. Bishop. Praise God. And he was here preaching at Mother Baker's funeral. He did not know that he would have been here today preaching at Pastor Collins' funeral so soon. Praise the name of Jesus. I also look back that I, I was here and all my sisters were alive. Praise God. I did not know that a few days later, one of my younger sisters would have passed away as well. Praise God. I say this, all of that, to say this to somebody today. Praise God. We, we, we are happy rejoicing that he's gone home and we have a hope. Praise God that he make it in. Praise God. And to the church, there will always be another pastor. Praise God. And to his family, praise God. Especially to his children. Praise God. That void will never be filled. And I just want to say to you, be encouraged today. Praise the name of Jesus. God will take care of you. Praise God. We have had a relationship with Pastor Collins to our late Bishop, Bishop Saunders. You know, whenever times he come home, praise God, for his anniversary and his week of meeting, there is always a night reserved for Pastor Collins. And we always say, Bishop, why you love Pastor Collins so? It was Minister Collins before Pastor Collins. All right? And he always said that, you know, he's a young man with potential. Praise the name of Jesus. And who also have the word. Praise the name of Jesus. And today, praise God. He's gone. Praise God. And we have a hope. You know, we're saying that maybe Bishop is saying to him, Man, you come. All right. Praise the name of Jesus. We just want to give God thanks today for his life. And I want to say to the church family, be encouraged. And to his immediate family as well. God will take care of you. God bless you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Let's praise the name of the Lord. Come on, praise the name of the Lord. Let's bless the Lord, everybody. Let the host of Zion shout hallelujah. Let the people of God shout hallelujah. Let the redeemer of the Lord shout hallelujah. The Bible said that let everything that I pray to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everybody in this house who bring them out and shout a praise unto the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Said God has been good to me, and you know today, yeah, trust me, it's a very challenging day for me. It is a great sacrifice, and um, if I had made a mistake and didn't turn up, then my brother Ronaldo would have my head for it. I have other important things to do, but I had to cancel just to be here. Bless the name of the Lord. I have a class going on now. But I'm in scholarly class just to be here. Praise the name of the Lord. Greetings to Rastim Associates. Greetings one and all. Greet family in the mighty name of Jesus. Today I want to bring greetings from our pastor, Pastor Tony Morris from the Holiness Born Again Christian. And uh, he said a tribute and it goes like this. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. We, the members of the Holiness Born Again Christian Angel Plane, 
join with the with you the brethren of Emmanuel Apostolic Church in freedom in mourning the loss of your beloved pastor. We can imagine your pain at this time, especially that he left us after such short illness and uh, not much time to say goodbye. One thing we are assured of is that Pastor Colin did what he could while he been here shepherding the flock, ensuring that the word was being preached and taught. Indeed, his departure from this life has demonstrated to the flock and to all that which was written in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. And because Pastor Collins died in the Lord, we are assured that he is just resting. We have this lively hope that we will see him again. Since their condolence to the extended family, the immediate family, church family, the congregation of Emmanuel Apostolic Friends Business Associates, we send our condolence to you. May the good Lord strengthen you all in this time of grief. Henceforth there is laid up for him a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give at the end. Sleep on, beloved Pastor Polly. Sleep on and take your rest. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, put your hands together, praise the name of the Lord. And this time we're going to have pastor. He said to me when we met in the supermarket, I saw him dressing. I said, where are you going, brother? He said, I'm going to a funeral. I said, then he turned to me. He said, oh, it's church. And I said, church, what is that's your job. You can't change church. Moses had his church for 40 years and couldn't change that. That's what I said to him. And he said to me, pastor, let me tell you this. Jesus never sent the pastor to die for him in church. Oh, Lord. That, I, I learned that. I'm going to keep that to my dear life. He said, Pastor, let me tell you, never you try to die for your church. Oh, and Jesus alone dead for church. I never said you for the church. Amen. Never hear that in my life. Such wisdom. Because I used to carry church here. I, I, I was our dear pastor for age 23. Do have a clue what to do. You understand? He hears so many care church with a young family, nervous breakdown, several times. And when the pastor looked me in the eye, I could miss this. My God. No. The only thing I'm sad about is that the restrictions, we couldn't have bigger stuff than this. Oh, but he was promoted. I will not use the word condolence to freedom, apostolic. Ministers, I will use the word congratulations because you have nourished a stalwart for promotion. Bless you, Lord. Can we just lift our hands and bless God? Can we just lift our hands and worship God, somebody? service and I hope you understand. You see this man that we are laying to rest today, he's a man for all. I'm from Christ of another Ulster Spring in Trunani and he came there to minister the word of God and can I tell you he is a man of God. And you know when I was asked just now come, to come and say what will I say? I greet you on behalf of Minister Miller and I glimpsed the hymn on the song sheet that says, when the toils of life are over, let me lay or I'm not out. And we bid farewell to our heart with all its cares. Hallelujah. We shall meet and greet our loved ones. And our Christ with that shall grow in the new Jerusalem. I'm looking forward to seeing Pastor Collins in the new Jerusalem. God bless you.
that God has done his work. And somebody, I want you to take a page out of Pastor Collins' book. I want somebody that is not saved, that, that you are to know that this is the true time to get salvation. I know a lot of persons are worried about COVID and what's going on in the world, but yet still they are not worried about preparing their souls for heaven. I want to tell somebody, this is the time for salvation. This is the day, hallelujah, the accepted hour. Bless the name of Jesus. I bring greetings to everyone, ministers. Bless the name of Jesus. Uh, church family, you know, persons that are related to Pastor Collins, you know, I, I'm just saying to you, we are praying for you. And we pray that God will continue to bless you and give you the wisdom to live the life, to reach where Pastor Collins has gone. I just want to bless your soul in this little song. Bless the name of Jesus.
Shall we bless the name of Jesus? Shall we bless the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. This evening I want to bring greetings to each and every one of us in here from our pastor in Malton Shallow Apostolic Church. And today I will do a tribute for Pastor Joshua Collins. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of, a, of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, First Thessalonians 4, 16 and 18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. These are very trying times for the family of Pastor Joshua Collins, for the church community, and for those who knew him as a friend and a chief associate. Apostle Paul sought to use these words to comfort saints in Thessalonica as they contemplate death and the loss of loved ones, he wanted them to understand death in relation to their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Don't sorrow as those who have no hope, he exhorts. Pastor Collins' death came as a real shock to us at Malta. We are saddened at his passing and want to share our sincere condolences with you. We will miss him in a profound way and we really regret. We cannot help you celebrate his life and work in a more practical way. May you be encouraged by God and change our promises that he will come again and receive us unto himself. Jesus Bless you as we celebrate the life and words of a great man of God. Pass the channel and family and saints from the Malton Shallow Apostolic Church. Hallelujah. I'll now just sing one verse of this song. I come just now to say Thank you, O oh King. You're not just a part of my life, but you're my everything. Your love reaches way down deep within, passes human understanding. The
name of the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 
has to say to us. Amen. Amen. I bring greetings to everyone in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. I bring greetings to you from my church family and my wife, who sends her condolences to the Collins family. Praise the name of the Lord. Also from the ministry that I pastor, the Ebenezer Worship Center Pentecostal, we bring greetings to you and all of the ministers of the form and everybody. Greetings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can I just get the formalities out of the way? Amen. So greetings. I mean, don't write this song. Amen, somebody. There's a word that the Lord gave to my heart to come and speak to us, but it seems as if there's no family in here. Yeah, yeah. No family is here. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 I, I know that everybody here, amen, the church is a family, but I'm talking about the immediate family. But we give the Lord thanks. Amen. There's a word that comes to us from the book of First Kings chapter 17. And if we look at it very diligently, chapter 1 to 7, I will not read it, but I will just emphasize on a couple of the verses. And some persons will ask me the question, why is it that I am preaching from First Kings, normally at a funeral setting, you will preach, for I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Amen, somebody. But there is something that I want to ask you tonight. It's a question of the heart. Are you there? Let's ask your name of the question, are you there? Come on, ask somebody, are you there? One of the things that I want to say to all of us in the presence of God this afternoon or tonight is that there was something that was going on back in this time where Elijah was disturbed by what Jezebel and Ahab was doing. And because of the curse, because of that which they were impaling upon the people, they had, he had to run for hiding. He had to find himself into a place where he did not want to find him. He prophesied about the drought that was coming. Because of that, Jezebel was upset. And Jezebel began to run after Elijah. And Elijah scurried away to the brook or the path of Zarephath. And down there, God gave Elijah a word. And that word I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been at a place in your life where you are so confused, you are so manipulated, you are so contradicted by the things that are happening around you? And in this circumstance, death. We do not And we understand one thing here. It is that we ask the question, why is it that the good have to suffer for the bad? In the book of Ecclesiastes, it tells us very well that the good will die before the wicked. Amen. The wicked will have more money than the good. Lifestyle, a life that is well tempered and tantalizing to the eyes. But then Elijah asked the question Why did you put me in a position as 
this? Why did you bring me to come and do a work that you know I will get a most criticism for? Oh uh, God, but the question is now that there are times we are at a place where we are discombobulated in our minds. But I want to ask you, is your heart at the right place? Is your mind at the right place? Is your entire being at the right place? Can you say when Jesus comes, just like his servant, hallelujah, Pastor Collins, are you there with the Lord? Hallelujah, that he can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Somebody praise the name of the Lord God. Hallelujah, I know as a child of God that I am there. Certain things may not be working in my favor, but many of you that are here tonight can say and respond to me because of the life that this great servant of God has lived and replicated. Hallelujah, I can say that I am there. Do I have any Bible believing? Somebody glorify the name of the Lord tonight. Somebody shout, I am there. The world is going in a different way. There is a detour. Man's agenda is coming into script and making a great display. But I am here to ask you if God should ask you a question.
church is just getting into this. And when it's done, yeah, we speak in tongues, but when it's done, hallelujah. So I want to have some care with the glass.
ask that you lift them up in your daily powers, that their footsteps will be guided by his teachings, and that they will grow from strength to strength. Our brother may have left earth, but weep not, for we know that he's smiling from the golden mansion in the heavens. A final thank you, and this goes out to the member of our extended family, to Cleve Collins and Evangelist Adam Garcia Bertrand, who have become a pillar of strength within our family. I want to personally thank you for being there when it was hard, for being a caretaker and caregiver to our brother, Joshua Collins, our nieces, and to our mother. I remember the day he called me with the news that he was ill and that I should call someone. And I am not a person who is now on his for words, but that day I sat and literally didn't know what to do for a few seconds. And the only person I could call who came to my mind right away was Garcia. I called Garcia and she has been there since day one. Your work has not gone unnoticed and we owe you and your family our most sincere gratitude. And to all those who loved and to all those who knew him, who witnessed his growth over the decades, we want you to know that he loved you all. Sometimes he would say more than himself, that he was a very given man and he would have given you his last penny and the last shirt of his back. We urge you to remember his sermons, remember his jokes, remember his laughter, and remember his straightforwardness. He would tell you as it is, good or bad, he would just say. And that was our brother, Joshua Khan. So we want to thank the community of freedom. We want to thank Craighead for his turnout and for giving him a send-off that was worthy of the life that he lived. His legacy will not be forgotten. And for many years to come, you will see his name printed. You will, kids will go to school knowing that it was Joshua Collins who made it possible. Families will eat knowing that it was Joshua Collins who made it possible. His name will live on. And through you here in the community, Together, work, we're working together, we'll make this happen. Again, on behalf of the Collins family, I want to say thank you and God bless. Start everybody. Praise God. We're going to be singing one of Pastor's favorite prayer chorus. Praise God. And we're going to close out in prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus. Another and sometimes the mountain I know the road. 
Thank you.